Looking for some pointers for recording and mixing your guitars in your home studio? Well, I've got five for you right here. If you want to see what's on the list, then join me for this episode of I Don't Have a Band, right now. Hey there, I'm Dan, the self-proclaimed Lonely Rocker. Thanks for joining me for this episode of I Don't Have a Band. In this episode, I want to share five tips, things that I practice all the time when producing electric guitars in a home studio. Now, uh, last I checked, I don't have an SSL console behind me or any crazy outboard gear. I'm a home studio guy just like you, and I'm not standing in front of a big board and telling you it's okay to use a plug-in instead. The truth is, it is okay. Anyways, these are things that I practice all the time, and like I said, I'm a home studio enthusiast just like you, so these are things you could definitely do in your own home studio. Anyways, without wasting any more time, let's jump in and check out my five tips on producing electric guitars in a home studio. Tip number one is focusing on your main discipline. Now, working in a home studio, you're going to be wearing a lot of different hats. But the truth is, if you're learning, you can't be great at everything at once. Pick your poison. Do you want to be a great mix engineer? Do you want to be a recording engineer or producer? Uh, If you're looking to be a great mix engineer, don't waste your time figuring out how to mic a cab. Uh, There's a lot of great solutions for guitar, whether it be plugins, modelers, direct boxes. Uh, You can spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to record a guitar, but if your focus is mixing, just don't waste your time. Now, obviously, if you're looking to be a great recording engineer, then there's no shortcuts. Best to do it the old way with an amp and a cab and learning how to mic. We all want to do it all. But the trick is to focus on your main discipline and build your skills out from that. Tip number two. I might get a lot of grumbling from tip number two, but hear me out. Tuning your guitar. Why the f*** are you wasting a tip on this when you only have five? Yes, I know, it's a basic thing, but trust me, hear me out on this one. When you're wearing a lot of different hats in the studio, and perhaps you're playing your own tracks, there's a lot of things to focus on. You want to get your tones right, get your levels right, make sure everything's in place, and then you jump in and you do a take, and you didn't check your tuning. When your mind is on a lot of different things, sometimes you just, you might not catch it. Uh, I've done that a million times. I once did a video review where I was actually recording guitars and shooting video at the same time, and at the end of the day, I started uh, editing the video, one of the guitars was out of tune. So here's my tip. Get everything set up, get your tones right, and just before you're about to record, take a deep breath, double check your tuning, make sure it's right, and then jump in and get that take done. Trust me, you'll thank me on this one. Tip number three. Tip number three is experimenting with different ways to double track your guitars. Now, the lazy way is you you play a track and then you just copy it to another track, pan it left and right, and you can call it a day. But the truth is, there's a lot of really fun things you can try with double tracking. Just the act of double tracking your guitar, playing it twice, because we're human beings, we're never going to play it perfectly, and that those imperfections actually create some nice effects on their own. But the other thing you can look at is change your pickup. You know, use an open humbucker on one track, pan it right, and then play the track again, maybe using your neck pickup, roll a little tone off, make it a little bassier, pan that one left. Just those variances can create some really, really interesting effects, even using different guitars. Uh, One thing that I love to do, especially for heavy guitars, is I'll play a big distorted, let's say Les Paul uh, humbucker tone. And then re-recording the track, but playing it with a, a Tele or a Strat style of guitar, really clean, you know, that chiminess, you can just blend it in with a dirty sound. And uh, you get some really cool articulation, you can actually hear the notes. So tip number three, experiment with different ways to double track your guitars. Tip number four. Tip number four is roll it off, especially in a rock context when you got drums and bass guitar. There's a chance for a lot of muddiness down in the lower registers, and that's really the last place your guitar needs to be hanging out. I mean, your bass drum and your bass guitar are are fighting for their own space. There's really no need to be mixing your guitars down there. So anything below 90 hertz, just roll it off. I don't care what kind of guitar part is, whether it's clean or distorted, just get rid of it, use a high pass filter, and just get it out of there. Chop it. Cut it. Just get rid of it. It's one great thing you can do to help minimize muddiness in the lower registers and creating some space for your guitar tracks. And tip number five is keep your solution simple and don't try to spend your way out of problems. Uh, I have to admit, when I first got started learning how to record and mix is I went crazy on plug-in sales and I must have spent $2,000, 29 bucks at a time. Anybody want to buy some uh, slightly used plugins? 
But now that I've gotten the hang of it, I find myself using less and less plugins. Uh, my guitar uh, plugin chains are generally pretty simple. I've got a channel strip, uh, definitely an EQ, sometimes a compressor, and then I bust that to a reverb. Uh, if I'm looking to do some flanges or modulation effects and delay, of course, you add those as required. Uh, but generally, my plugin chains are pretty simple for guitars. Uh, you can go crazy piling plugins on top of plugins, and you're just going to compound your problem. The best thing to do is try to translate that amp if that's what you're doing, or if you're using your favorite plugin or model. You know, those sounds are there, and really what you're trying to do is find that place for the guitar in that mix. You know, just piling on plugins and experimenting with, with so many different pieces, you know, your, your gain staging and all things can be out of whack. Keep it simple, pick a couple of plugins, just the essentials, get the guitar sounding right, and then if you have a little room, you can always add a little color at the end. Just keep it simple, and I promise not to call you stupid. Well, there are my five tips for producing electric guitars in a home studio. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting and useful. Uh, if there's any interest in me breaking out any of these concepts further, just let me know in the comments. If there's enough interest, I'll give it serious consideration in producing a full video on the topic, so don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I hope I've earned to subscribe. You can just hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. I've got a lot of information here, a lot of great videos revolving around my home studio, guitars, gear, reviews, all sorts of stuff, so please check out some of my other videos. Uh, if you really want to support this channel. Uh, I am on Patreon. Links to all of my information are in the description below. And above all else, I'll see you again in another video. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you can do by yourself right from your own home. I hope to see you again next time.